Uh, welcome to another video. Uh, in this one, we're just going to highlight how you can explore a lot of the environmental and climate data that's available on EcoCommons. So we have a lot of raster data or grids um, of environmental and climate data available. And honestly, it's a really easy way. If you use EcoCommons for nothing else, um, it is so easy to grab data um, from the platform. So we'll show you how to do that. So, and, and we'll do that on the platform here real quickly. So essentially, the first screen that you arrive at when you log into EcoCommons is the one where you can view the data sets. So currently we have about 6,000 data sets that have been uploaded to the platform. They're ready to plug and play, right? So they can be used in all our workflows. They've been formatted in a way that um, we can use them. And they're also available for you to you. So um, that's say, for example, uh, we want to search for, well, first of all, let's go through the filters. We've got a lot of filters here. So I can filter and I just want to see my data set. So I might have uploaded some environmental data or some occurrence data. It'll show up here under my data sets. If data had been shared with me, so so far no data has been shared with me, but if had been from collaborators, it would show up there. And um, we have a lot of monthly data, which is a big volume of data. So if we don't want to see the monthly data, right? We just want to see annual data or current or future data that's based on several decades sometimes of, of data. But we want to pull the, the monthly data. We we get about rid of about half of the records or half of the data sets that you can, can view. So half of the data sets that we have are to support seasonal modeling or modeling of migratory movements or other things. Um, then you can filter by, you know, if we're looking at future data or current and historic data. So if we're looking at current and historic data, again, we've really reduced the number of records, number of data sets that you can you can download and look at. So most of that future data is climate related, climate projections into the future. There's a lot to choose from. Um, so we've got 417 that are not monthly in nature and are either historic or current. Uh, then we could also say, oh, well, I only want Australian data, right? So we've slipped down to 251 results now, a much more manageable subset of records to be looking through. Uh, you could filter by resolution. So maybe you only want one kilometer resolution data or 90 meter resolution data, whatever it might be. Uh, you might only want marine data, right? You, if you're in the looking at future climate projections, you might have a specific global circulation model. Um, so that's how the the mod the the predictions are generated is by using a global circulation model to predict what the temperature is going to be like in the future. There's a lot of those options available, right? So that's GCMs. There's a little information button that'll tell you more. Um, and you might know, oh, well, I know this is a source from ANU, right? And that's the data I want to use, so I'm just going to filter by that. So a lot of filters to choose from. Hit the reset button, and you're back to where you started with all 6,000 results. Um, so I again, I'm going to get rid of the monthly data. I'm going to get rid of the future data because um, I'm just in, interested in those core bits. And maybe I want to look at some NDVI data, right? Well, look at that. We've got one one data set of NDVI for Australia, and I can view that. So I can look here, and so there's um, your NDVI index from throughout Australia. If I want some more information on that layer. So this is these are the two layers that are available within the NDVI data set in this particular one. This is the resolution of those data. This is uh, when it was um, generated, 
um, some links to more information and acknowledgement. Uh, the license is listed here. So a lot of good information for you. And I can download it. Right. So if I want to use it in something else, I can download it. But uh, I forgot this part. If say I'm I'm coding in R or Python or something. Um, if I copy this URL, right? Um, I can just load that data directly into R. So if I was using the Terra package in R, I would just type, you know, NDVI uh, equals um, RAST in parentheses and this quote, and you would automatically pop that data into your coding environment. So it becomes really, really easy to access all the data sets that have been added to the platform so far and more data sets are coming. So really easy to access data. And these again are all the curated data that we have available. But thanks to our partners at CSIRO, um, we have included their knowledge network within the platform. And the awesome thing about the knowledge network is it takes, so every now and then, um, folks at CSIRO have a program that will scrape the data catalogs around the place. And those data catalogs will um, then they'll they'll pull out of those data catalogs a bit of metadata and some information on how to get the data. So these data sets in the knowledge network aren't stored on the platform, but you can look for how to get 80,000 different data sets, right? So if I type in digital elevation model, for example, DEM, um, the first result that comes up of the three, 436 digital elevation models that we have information on, right? We get some information on that dig digital elevation model. This stuff gets filled in if it's available, right? But it tells you what, what kind of DEM are we looking at? Um, it then, gives you information on, so let's say I want to download the index. Here's a, a URL, so you could download it old school. If you're a coder, you can download it. Just like I told you, you could download the API connections from EcoCommons, right? It's getting so easy to access data when you're coding now. It's awesome. But here, in just a couple of steps, I've identified maybe a data set I didn't didn't know of previously. I don't know if we can view all of the data sets, so sometimes the view button will just take you to where uh, the original source of the data. So that's, um, I think some of them we actually visualize, but um, not many of them because we've got, um, uh, probably not any of them actually. Yeah, so view takes you to the original source where you can get the data. Right, I should have known that. Um, so anyway, lots of data that you can choose from. Um, if you want to learn more about the kinds of data that we have, just keep in mind we've got, if you go to support.ecocommons.org.au, um, there's more information on all of this kind of stuff. These, there's a couple new support articles. For example, there's one on SDMs and climate projections, so it walks you through all kinds of information. This support article will be uploaded in the next couple of days, but it just talks about how all of these things are calculated that are within the data. Um, there's a nice index here, a nice table that walks you through the different emission scenarios, and it walks you through um, what the GCMs are, which GCMs are tied to which databases, all that kind of stuff. So. Um, heaps and heaps of information that you can find on the platform in the support articles. If you have any other questions, just visit ecocommons.org.au. You can um, yeah, you can contact us uh, directly through that website, so you can hit contact, um, and you can find all of our learn and support material, including these videos on our educational material page. Um, I hope you enjoy checking out EcoCommons and maybe I'll see you on the next video.